It has been said that the Industrial Revolution was the most profound revolution in human history because of its sweeping impact on people's daily lives. The term Industrial Revolution is a catchphrase to describe a historical period starting in 18th century Great Britain where the pace of change appeared to speed up. This acceleration in the processes of technical innovation brought about an array of new tools and machines. It also involved more subtle practical improvements in various fields affecting labor, production, and resource use. However, this era has its own setbacks and flaws. Notably, the Industrial Revolution has also brought about an issue concerning the relationship between employers and employees. In 1891, Pope Leo XIII issued the first encyclical relating to Catholic doctrine on social and economic issues. Its name, Rerum Novarum, means of new things, and the document was a response to the Industrial Revolution that had been taking place since the 18th century, the emergence of liberal and subsequently Marxist economic theories. The compendium d- describes Rerum Novarum as the encyclical which examines the condition of salaried workers, which was particularly distressing for industrial laborers who languished in inhumane misery. This document marks a developmental shift in church thinking on the topic of workers, employers, and the state. It is the first document to address these issues thoroughly since the developed world had made the transition from a primarily agrarian society to one marked by the effects of the Industrial Revolution and the development of capital. The Rum Novarum marks the beginning of a new path, grafting itself onto a tradition hundreds of years old. It signals a new beginning and a singular development of the Church's teaching in the area of social matters. On the condition of labor, this groundbreaking social encyclical addresses the dehumanizing conditions in which many workers labor and affirms workers' rights to just wages, rest, and fair treatment to form unions and to strike if necessary. Pope Leo XIII upholds individuals' right to hold private property but also notes the role of the state in facilitating distributive justice so that workers can adequately support their families and someday own property of their own. He notes the poor have a claim to special consideration. Pope Leo XIII criticizes both capitalism for its tendency toward greed, concentration of wealth, and mistreatment of workers, as well as socialism for what he understood as the rejection of private property and an underemphasis on the dignity of each individual person. Moving on, on the other themes of Rerum Novarum, property issues and the inequalities among people. The encyclical then vocally criticized the unequal distribution of wealth and the huge gap between the rich and the poor. Wage and protection of workers, Rerum Novarum argues that the division between people may be addressed if we move towards the improvement of the workplace. Wages are regulated by free consent. To avoid injustice, the government must intervene seeing to it that workers receive what is due to them. The principal duty of employers is to give everyone what is just. And lastly, solidarity and the workers' unions. Rerum Novarum supports the working men's unions as legitimately supported by the notion of natural rights, and it criticizes the state's tendency to suppress these unions. Workers' unions are mechanisms not for their own sake, but to ensure that the conditions are set so as to allow workers to maximally perform and use their full potentials. One of the foundational texts of Catholic social teaching, this document articulated such tenets as the common good. It cannot but be good for the commonwealth to shield from misery those on whom it so largely depends for the things that it needs. The preferential option for the poor. God himself seems to incline rather to those who suffer misfortune. 
For Jesus Christ calls the poor blessed. He lovingly invites those in labor and grief to come to him for solace. And he displays the tenderest charity toward the lowly and the oppressed and the dignity of the human person. To misuse men as though they were things in the pursuit of gain or to value them solely for their physical powers that is truly shameful and inhuman. In fact, in providing an essential moral vocabulary for the work and aims of unions, Rerum Novar gives us the ability to distinguish between better and worse labor policy and practice and indeed benchmarks for how to think about progress in labor rights across various jurisdictions. Rerum Novarum shaped our civil society with Catholic movements in different sectors, employees, employers, farmers, and different kinds of members, men, women, and youth, still being associated with it today. It shaped our political framework with a close link between these movements. One of the most important and still relevant features of Rerum Novarum is its recognition of structural causes of the fate of laborers despite its older view on charity, which was also still present in the encyclical. Pope Leo XIII recognized that poverty is not merely a personal matter, but has structural causes, something we easily tend to forget, especially people who seemingly do not want to contribute to society, let alone towards people who are calling upon our compassion and responsibility by knocking out our borders. While Pope Leo XIII strongly affirmed private property rights in Rerum Novarum in opposition to socialist theories of the time that sought state ownership of all property as a means to redistribute wealth, the Pope also affirmed with equal clarity the subordination of private property to the common good. In other words, Private property should serve not just the well-being of the owner, but the well-being of the society. On the role of the state, Pope Leo XIII taught the government should not absorb the rights of individuals or families, or intrude on their activities consistent to the common good, but that doesn't remove the state's obligation to care for the neediest. When it comes to the state's role in defending the rights of the individuals, Pope Leo XIII said the poor deserves special attention, a theme that Pope Paul VI reaffirmed on a global scale in his 1967 encyclical Populorum Progresso. On the conditions of labor today, International Labor Organization or ILO, a specialized agency of the United Nations, has as its aim the development of labor standards policies, and programs that promote human and labor rights throughout the globe. The concept of decent work comprises a key part of the United Nations' most recent 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, with goal number 8 calling for the promotion of sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth full and productive employment and decent work. These words align closely with Pope Francis' appeal to true freedom of labor in which labor is not an instrument of alienation, but of hope and new life. More progress is needed to create decent work for all, including increasing employment opportunities, particularly for young people, reducing informal employment and labor market inequalities, and promoting safe and secure working environments. Access to financial services also needs to be improved to ensure sustained and inclusive economic growth. Most importantly, we deserve to have access on equal opportunities in the societal workplace. Being able to have a career or a job drastically helps millions of families and individuals on living happily on our planet. We must eradicate the discrimination and injustice in our system and promote our own well-being as one. We do not get unlimited chances to have the things we want. Consequently, nothing is worse than missing an opportunity that could have changed our life.